Tennessee, tornadoes spawned by powerful thunderstorms caused severe damage Sunday. At least one person was killed and at least 100 others were injured in the small town of Lenore City near Knoxville. Several homes and businesses were leveled and police say all power has been knocked out. A curfew is in effect until 6 o'clock this morning. One person was killed when a tornado touched down outside Knoxville, Tennessee. 35 others were hospitalized. Well, with the wind, we just moving these cars and everything, every house and everything right up the street. I went this way. Another tornado death in Cedartown, Georgia. Both twisters the result of severe thunderstorms that covered a wide area. Is that a car? Near Vail, Colorado. You are watching News Channel 10, East Tennessee's News Channel, your 24-hour source for news. This is Action 10 News Today. I just ducked and went to pray to God. That's what I done. Went to begging God to help us is what I begged. Residents are assessing damage and cleanup crews are clearing away debris as dawn begins to break on tornado-ravaged areas of East Tennessee. Tornadoes and tornado-like winds tore through the area last night, killing at least one person, injuring dozens of others, destroying homes and businesses. Good morning. Today is Monday. It's February 22nd, 1993. I'm Carl Williams. Adina's on assignment this morning. Residents are waking to destruction and authorities say that it may be days before order is restored in areas hit hard by tornado winds. Action 10 News has crews on the scenes of the area's worst hit by the tornadoes uh, yesterday and last night. Ken Schwal and Adina Chumley join us live via Skylink from Lenore City, reportedly the area suffering the most destruction. Adina, Ken, good morning. Good morning, Carl. We are on Broadway in Lenore City, one of the uh, hardest hit areas in the uh, business area of Lenore City. Behind, uh, as you can see, what remains, just the rubble of a dry cleaners. So a lot of devastation in Lenore City in several areas, and this is just one of them. Also, one death, as you know, and still we do not have that woman identified, although, as I said, we do know she is a woman. Uh, the curfew is expiring here at 6 a.m. They imposed that overnight, starting at 9 o'clock last night, to uh, uh, combat any looting that may uh, occur and of course uh, Ken has been here all night long with a photographer and uh, he can tell us from that angle yeah it's it's uh, it's been a quiet night mostly just patrolling cars patrolling police highway patrol uh, different agencies even TVA is doing some patrolling here but uh, it's a lot quieter than it was in the evening time because uh, of the devastation and the uh, the rescue efforts that were going on. This was a strange tornado. It, it just kind of hopped around town uh, going in, in one particular direction. But some neighborhoods were spared while others were simply devastated. The tornado first touched down in the area of A Street and Fifth Avenue, an older neighborhood perched high upon a hill. Rescue crews spent hours working to free the body of an elderly woman who died when the tornado struck with little or no warning. Layers of roof and flooring had to be lifted off by crane. Shortly after 9 p.m., the woman's body was found, still sitting on the living room couch. Up and down A Street, it was much the same. Homes destroyed or heavily damaged. Cars tossed about. The signs of a savage storm with a will of its own. For many survivors, it was a brush with death. Something hit the side of the house, and she asked what, you know, what hit. And I got up and went to the kitchen, and about that time, it sucked all the windows out, and I blew me to the floor. And I was hollering, telling her to get to the floor, and it kind of pushed her down the hall there, and we kept hollering to each other, making sure we was all right. It was just unbelievable how fast this happened. Dr. George Nobles lives on a ridge not far from Lenore City. And I looked, and all of a sudden, a big funnel cloud just popped over the top of the ridge and just started coming right for our house. And I said, oh my God, grab the kids, let's run to the basement. So we grabbed the kids, ran to the basement, we all huddled up in the corner and just began to pray. Nothing happened, and I thought, my Lord, this thing's had, you know, enough time to hit. I got back up and looked, and it was just sitting in the valley, just sitting still, and all of a sudden it just went off to the right towards the North City, Knoxville. I didn't know where it was going. His house and his family were spared. Dr. Noble's clinic in Lenore City was among several businesses damaged or destroyed. Most of the commercial damage was confined to an area on the city's main drag, just off of Highway 321. They included two gas stations and a bank. This insurance office was badly damaged, complicating its ability to service customers who'll want to file claims today. But they think they can handle it. 
We've got an office in Knoxville that will have the phone number up there. Our paper files are in excellent shape, so we're going to set a temporary office up in Lenore City, and they'll, some of the companies will probably send in disaster crews like they did in Miami. We could tell, uh, as you all could, uh, by looking at the pictures, uh, pockets of, of devastation in individual houses and buildings and things like that. But uh, we know in about an hour or so, when when the day of uh, the light of day comes, uh, we can put it in perspective. And I'm feeling it'll look a lot worse. Exactly, and I, I, we probably should note that they will start at that time doing house to house searches. And I know that they're going to bring in some dogs to uh, sniff out as well. But you know, interestingly enough, when you look around at all the damage, it, it's interesting to find the spirit of survival, the spirit of relief, and Al Clinch found that overnight. Everybody, you all right? Is your lady all right? Oh. The main concern tonight is about life, not property. The residential area near the intersection of highways 11 and 321 didn't take a direct hit, but the damage is still great. Chris Raper and his wife are glad they were shopping in Knoxville when the storm hit, and that their infant daughter is okay. I'm glad we went home because I don't know what I was doing. I'm just glad my daughter's okay. The cleanup actually got underway in this area, but there's not much talk of cleanup just a few blocks away. Instead, talk of a bigger search for other victims. When it, when it got dark, it, it's almost impossible. What you're looking for is sounds, noises. Uh, fortunately, volunteers from the military was willing to help out with it, as well as the fire chief, who's obviously in charge in this inside the city, uh, and he was in charge of, this, of the overall search. And are there, in fact, other areas uh, yes. that have been hit that really haven't been checked out much at all? There's no telling what we'll find tomorrow morning. There's areas that are more isolated, that are not as populated, and they may well be if anything going on in those areas. We don't think anyone has probably been injured in those areas. If they have, they probably made their way to the hospital. Uh, however, the destruction could have been significant enough to have other deaths that we're just not aware of at this time. All over town, people are saying they haven't seen anything like it. They can only hope that the light of a new day doesn't bring too much more devastation. Al Clench, Action 10 News today in Lenore City. Howard Luttrell joins me now. He's been directing the emergency management efforts, and you've, you've had a long night, and uh, you've told me that they're bringing in dogs. You're basically waiting on the light of day at this point. At first light, we, we're, we've divided uh, Lenore City into eight zones to organize our search. And yes, we do have uh, dogs coming in from, uh, from Bradley County that will help us in the search. We're, we're confident we've extracted uh, the folks, but we're going to be sure. Okay, and I noticed that uh, some power is back on in the city now. How, how does that stand? Well, we have about 20% power to the city. It's basically through the central business district. Uh, TVA and, and Lenore City Utilities work in the evening at about 315. We got about 20% of the power on, and that included the, uh, the water, the water uh, station for right. Lenore City, which, which kept pressure on our lines and relieved uh, any fears that we had about a water shortage. Now, Howard, I know there is a, a retirement type housing complex that you guys are gonna, gonna clear out this morning and, and get those people fed because they have no power. Tell me about that. We have about 75 residents at Spring Place here in Lenore City, predominantly elder, elderly folks. We left them in last night because they, they were comfortable, uh, had, had settled in, but it's going to get cooler today. We're going to feed them at the First Baptist Church at the Red Cross Shelter and then take them to Lenore City High School uh, because they do have heat and uh, power out at the high school at this time. Okay, Howard, thanks a lot. And we'll be talking to you throughout the day, maybe a little bit later on in this newscast as well. Thanks. Thank you. We appreciate it. We want to note also that Highway 321, which is the main uh, road through this area, especially for Blount County and heading south, is open this morning. But uh, you may not be able to get onto the other uh, main road, Broadway in uh, Lenore City. And uh, of course, we just want to mention again, the Red Cross is reminding people that they can take money donations and food donations uh, to help out in this effort. Carl? Adina, one other question before you go there. Of course, there is a, a National Guard unit uh, stationed right there in Loudoun. Is there any talk yet, and it may be a little early for this, but is there any talk yet uh, possibly pressing that unit into service here? I uh, haven't heard anything about that, Carl. Late last night when we were leaving, they were in a stand-down stand mode, which uh, they were basically relieving a lot of the uh, uh, emergency officials that were coming into the community uh, to help out because they feel like they've got a hold on things right now. Uh, they may have to activate them later. I have seen a couple of uniformed uh, people, so uh, 
you know, they may need them, especially when they uh, see how much devastation was involved here and, uh, of course, the problem of looting if that crops up. All right, Adina. From Lenora City. Okay, Adina. Adina Ken, continues, thank you. Well done. We'll get back to you a little bit later. Meteorologist Byron Weber joins us. Uh, Byron, of course, I know you were on duty from just about the time this thing all started to move into the area after 5 o'clock yesterday. Was there any way to know really what this thing was doing, where it was? Well, we knew that we had a tornado watch in effect, and we have a, when you have a tornado watch in effect, you have to pay attention because that means conditions are favorable for possible tornadoes. And, of course, we had several severe thunderstorm warnings, and we had the uh, tornado that uh, happened in Oak Ridge, then Powell, uh, then Lenore City, then Friendsville, and so forth. So uh, the, the, warning, you know, the, the warnings were there. We had the, the little symbol, the tornado watch. We ran little messages. And when that happens, please always pay attention because you just never know. It can happen just like that, and it happened uh, very, very quickly. But everything's okay right now. Uh, all the activity is out of here. We're going to see some cool temperatures. It's going to be a little breezy and a little sunshine. Let's have a look at the current conditions as I speak. Clear skies, 42 degrees. Keep you updated as uh, the day goes on, but uh, it'll be cool and breezy, and that's about it. Back to you, Carl. All right. Thank you, Byron. It's 11 minutes after 6 o'clock. Action 10's Patty McGeever has been on the job with us this morning. She is in the community of Powell and uh, also the Broadacre area, two areas which were hit uh, relatively hard here, uh, and she joins us live. Uh, good morning, Patty. That's right, Carl. I am in the Powell area in the Ponderosa neighborhood, uh, to be exact, where subdivisions, a couple of subdivisions have been torn apart by the storm. And as soon as the sun comes up, people will begin to assess the damages. We'll have more on Action 10 News today. All right, thank you. Patty McGeever will be with us a little bit later on. It's 11 and a half minutes after 6 o'clock. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Homes and businesses in the Powell community must also start picking up the pieces this morning. Action 10's Patty McGeever, who is in Powell, joins us with the latest on that. Good morning, Patricia. Good morning, Carl. I'm on Paradise Drive in the Ponderosa neighborhood. Paradise Drive, it's a very odd name for a street that is littered with debris and broken trees, gutters and siding and, and uh, insulation. Look at this house just for, as an example. The tree is snapped up in the front yard. The roof is taken off of this home. Windows are shattered. The front door is busted out. These people were able to salvage many of the items in their home and bring them outside last night. De uh, deputies were outside of the subdivisions making sure that no one could go in and loot the damaged homes, but people were allowed in, homeowners were allowed in to salvage what they could. They was the wind was just moving these cars and everything, every house and everything right up the street. Dear God, I'm just thankful these neighbors got out of these, my friends. It was shortly before five last evening when the storm roared through Powell. A storm so severe that residents could only watch in disbelief at the path of destruction left behind. Lisa McDougall's house was destroyed. And just heard a loud pop and things started flying in front of my eyes. And, and all I could think about was my little boy. So I started calling for him and the wall had fallen over him. I had to pick it up and move it to get to him. Need to move back on the other side. I just stood and yelled, God, please help me. And then I thought, oh, God. I said, oh, this is a tornado. And I just went screaming and I looked out the window and everything was a-going, everything. And I saw every one of them, every one of the tops just go off. Every one of them, the back ones and all. I knew no one of us how to say it. I just ducked and went to praying to God. It's what I done. Went to begging God to help us is what I begged. The neighbors here said they heard trees snapping and glass breaking. And within minutes, the storm had left a path of destruction through this neighborhood. This is uh, certainly the worst natural disaster that I've seen uh, 18 years at the Sheriff's Department. <laughs> Neighbors in this Northbrook subdivision and surrounding area were the hardest hit in Knox County. Roofs and walls were peeled off of homes, exposing belongings to the neighborhood. Gutters dangled from wires and insulation covered the streets. Trees snapped like twigs. And strong winds picked up and moved parked cars. Others were smashed. Not even a brick wall could stop flying debris. Now the cleanup begins and residents try to salvage what they can. 
Carl. Now, some of the people whose homes were not totally destroyed were able to nail some plastic to the roofs to guard against any possible rain that we may have had overnight. We did not have any, but it was taken just as a precaution. That was done by the Knox County Sheriff's Department and Rural Metro. They teamed up to help people in that respect. And for people who could not go back into their homes, we know that the Red Cross was offering uh, free motel rooms overnight. Carl? All right, Patty. And of course, uh, when that cleanup begins, there are always those who were not affected by the storm uh, uh, through uh, damage who are going to be facing some electricity and water problems today. The Hallsdale Powell Utility District pumping station went down yesterday. Users in the area are asked to please conserve water. Uh, they do hope to have the water situation back to normal by sometime this afternoon. And a P.S. to that is that all of the Powell schools are closed today, repeating all PAL schools closed today. By nightfall, the shock of that storm that you heard Patty McGeever talking about began to sink in for the residents of PAL. Uh, Action 10's Cassandra McGee was on the scene shortly thereafter, and here's her report. It shattered all the windows in the back of the house. But the front of this house on Elmbrook Road in the Northbrook subdivision was destroyed. Homeowner Chris Reed planned to spend the night in his truck, guarding what was left of his home and belongings. He was at home with his children when the storm hit. My little girl, I seen her, but I couldn't see my little boy for a minute, and it, you know, terrified me for a few seconds. Stories were much the same throughout the neighborhood. I looked out and saw trash cans and chairs and stuff lying across the door, and I yelled at my wife to, to open the doors and open the windows, let the pressure equalize. And she thought I was joking, so and I said, no, that's honey, there's a tornado coming to get the baby, stay in the doorway. You know, and here it comes, just whoosh. The lady was inside the hallway. The man was pinned against the refrigerator. He said he couldn't even move. And he said his son ran to him. All, all of a sudden, the house, the roof and the back wall came off. Down Beaver Creek Road, Mildred Klofelter's trailer remained intact while trees and debris swirled around it. Pretty scary. I've got a board that went right through... Uh, right above my little vent there, see where it's sticking out? Came through in the bedroom. <laughs> and in the Ponderosa subdivision, yeah. this family came home from out of town to find their home destroyed. <laughs> KUB workers worked throughout the evening to restore lost power throughout the Powell area. Residents felt the first effects of the damage tonight, but they say the real pain will come with the light of day. Cassandra McGee, Action 10 News. All right, Cassandra, again, the Powell Utilities officials are urging residents to please conserve waters. We told you the pumping station at the Hallsdale Powell Utility District went down. They do hope to have that situation cleared up momentarily, possibly by this afternoon. However, area reservoirs do have water, but the supply is limited until power is fully restored, and that may be sometime later or maybe even in a day or so. Meteorologist Byron Weber joins us once again with a look at the system that uh, caused death and destruction. Uh, Byron, it's been a long time since we've seen anything like this in this area. Really has, Carl. This is probably... morning. Welcome back. Coming up on uh, 24 minutes after 6 o'clock, downed power lines are blocking roads in Oak Ridge this morning. All of Scarborough Road, Union Valley Road, and the east end of Bear Creek Road are closed due to damage. Now, it's going to cause some problems for those of you who work in the area. All traffic entering the Y-12 plant must enter at the west end of the plant off Route 95. Tornadoes that hit the Oak Ridge area destroyed a couple of buildings at the Union Valley Industrial Park. The loss of electricity caused some problems at the Y-12 plant as well. TVA's Bull Run uh, steam plant and Loudon steam plant suffered some damage. The plants themselves were not damaged, but uh, lines were knocked down. The steam plant is scheduled to be back online sometime this morning. Meanwhile, Monroe Countyans did not escape the uh, wrath of the tornadoes in that region last night. It's estimated that the twisters destroyed nearly 38 homes in uh, the county in the Winkler Hollow area. Robin Sells reports on the damage. Dave Thomas's life literally turned upside down when a tornado ripped through Teleco Plains just after 6 Sunday evening. Just to show you how powerful this tornado was, Dave Thomas's trailer was blown off its foundation, turned upside down, and it landed on his two cars. Believe it or not, his family made it out okay. Uh, it's not a feeling like it in the world. It, uh, it looked like it was just like a movie, you know, like you see on TV of uh, those... Uh, tornadoes and it just everything was just flying all over the place and furniture falling on and hitting and stuff. 
Monroe County Sheriff's officials estimate the tornado wiped out about 30 homes and down power lines in its three-mile path. Officials are reporting only minor injuries. We'll, we'll stay out in the areas that have been the hardest hit and just keep patrol units in the area to protect the personal belongings of the people and to help assist in any way that they may need help. Mike Gregory planned to keep watch over his home that had been reduced to rubble in a moment's notice. His family managed to gather a few items from the mound of debris. Even the dog seemed shocked at the sight. The Gregories weren't as lucky as their neighbor just yards away. His house was heavily damaged. It was knocked off its foundation, but at least it was standing. He explains the calm before the storm. It'll get real still. There ain't no, there ain't no air, no oxygen. It just cuts it all off. And then all at once, it, boom, it, it's right here. A neighbor was nice enough to bring him his new weed eater. They found it hundreds of yards away. But it won't be until daylight before the people of Teleco Plains can begin picking up the pieces of their life. In Monroe County, Robin sells Action 10 News today. All right, thanks, Robin. Also coming up, Carl, we'll have a live report from Lenora City where the tornadoes did their worst damage. A lot of devastation and one death. That coming up next. Station and one death. That coming up next. All I could think about was my little boy. So I started calling for him, and the wall had fallen over him. I had to pick it up and move it to get to him. At least one person is dead at this hour, and dozens of people are injured as tornadoes rip through East Tennessee. As dawn begins to wake over the Smoky Mountains and the East Tennessee area, rescue crews are pulling victims out of their homes. Good morning. It's Monday, February 22nd, 1993. I'm Carl Williams. Hundreds of homes and businesses have been wiped out by last night's tornadoes. Authorities say that it may be days before order is restored in tornado-ravaged areas. Action 10's news crew have been on the scene throughout the night at locations worst hit by the tornadoes. Ken Schwal and Adina Chumley join us live via Skylink from Lenore City, reportedly the area suffering the most devastation. Adina, Ken, tell us what's been going on down there this morning. Okay, Carl, um, we just wanted to show you a little bit about what's been going on overnight here. This used to be a dry cleaner right about at Broadway and Highway 321, not far from it. There's a door frame that you're looking at right there that was basically just just burst out of the building and if we if we pan a little bit for you here and show you some of the cinder blocks that were basically just crushed pulled apart and thrown down into a rubble the entire building has collapsed upon itself so the tornado has just really ripped a, a path of devastation through this uh, this community and it appeared to have a bounce effect it hit one community became airborne and then hit another section like neighborhoods uh, a lot going on here right now this morning even though things have quieted down a little bit they're now preparing for the rush hour they've closed schools as a lot of people do know city and county schools have been closed and a shelter has been set up we're going to show you some video of that we went there this morning and a lot of people about 25 people spent the night in the shelter last night some wanting uh, to get out of their homes because they had no power last night. Others who are not real sure if they have a home to go back to. Uh, the Red Cross is, of course, operating this shelter at the First Baptist Church here in Lenore City. And they tell us that, of course, they will take donations of food and money and it would help them out uh, greatly. Also, of an interesting note this morning, uh, they are going to be taking uh, some uh, senior citizens out of one of the housing uh, developments here and bring them to uh, the Red Cross Center to feed them because there's no power, so no heat, and it's starting to really get cold out here, Carl. And then, of course, they're going to take them over to the high school. The high school here, Lenore City High School, does have heat, and I think they're going to sort of move some of the shelters uh, over there um, for that reason. And uh, over the night, as we said, it, it was just a, an effort to assess what was going on and, of course, to search for bodies. As we know, they found one, and uh, her identity is not yet known. But Kinshwal, uh, Carl, I think we need to uh, point out that the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency, the state agency that oversees these sort of uh, uh, disasters, will be in Lenore City first this morning. I think they're sending five or six teams into East Tennessee, and they're going to start here because, as you know, uh, the devastation uh, apparently has, has hit the worst here in Lenore City and uh, 
areas of the county. Uh, one death, again, we have not uh, gotten a, con a confirmation on her identity. And also, shortly, just at daybreak, they're bringing in dogs uh, to uh, take to some of the areas and see if they can find anybody else that has not been accounted for. Carl? All right, Adina. By the way, I'm sure it's probably a little bit premature yet, but is there any estimate at all on how much damage has been done there? We're going to have to wait a while. I guess we will. Oh, I think we're going to have to wait a while, Carl, because they they are were telling me this morning that uh, they suspect there may be even more damage than they had anticipated uh, because, you know, it's so dark last night and so hard to get a grip on uh, just exactly what had been hit. So it will be interesting to see and in the light of day just exactly what this tornado did do. One other thing, Adina, and then uh, I'll let you go there. We realize that in times like this, people become very vulnerable, and because of that, a curfew was established from 9 o'clock until 6 this morning. Now, that has been lifted. Is that correct? That's right, Carl. The curfew is over. Highway 321 is open, so you can get through, and they're changing some of the roadblocks. So uh, people headed to work who live in this area or go through this area, be aware of that. Back to you, Carl. Okay, we will thank you, Adina. Oak Ridge and areas of Monroe County were also uh, hit hard last night by the tornadoes and tornado-like winds. And when we come back, we'll have complete details of that damage and stories from the survivors. It's uh, 20 minutes until 7 o'clock. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Serologist Byron Weber on Action 10 News. Good morning. Bad weather is dominating the headlines across the nation this morning. In the south, tornadoes are being blamed for at least two deaths and lots of damage. In the Rockies, a blinding snowstorm has blocked highways, stranding hundreds of travelers. And in the east, a mixed bag of rain and snow has left many in the northeast digging their way out today, Monday, February the 22nd, 1993. From uh, Central Park here in New York. systems have swept across the country, unleashing everything from tornadoes to heavy snow. One twister touched down Sunday evening near Knoxville, Tennessee, killing one person and leaving 100 others injured. Another life was lost when a tornado roared through Cedartown, Georgia. The Northeast is getting pounded by its fourth big winter storm in a week. Colorado is digging out and dealing with avalanches. Here's Roger. Nine degrees. Uh now, from East Tennessee's news channel, Action 10 News Today continues. And a very good morning. Today is Monday, February 22nd, 1993, just after 7.55. And right now, under partly cloudy skies, we're looking at a cool 39 degrees. Uh, meteorologist Byron Weber joins us a little bit later on in the afternoon. But right now, let's get another look at traffic with WIVK's uh, traffic tracker, Ed Rupp. Good morning. Twister and an elderly woman was killed. We still don't have an identification of her. This was the scene just moments ago as residents begin to sift through the rubble of their homes and their businesses. It may be days before the town regains all of its electricity. Back closer to home, the Powell community in Knox. It appears, though, that Lenore City was the hardest hit. Tornado winds up to 250 miles an hour ripped through that section of the city, killing at least one person as yet unidentif unidentified, injuring dozens more and leveling homes and businesses. A tornado... Coming up next on Action 10 News at Noon, the slow cleanup process begins for several East Tennessee communities following yesterday's tornadoes. We'll have a team report on the damage and the efforts to rebuild. Our meteorologist Byron Weber will check a look at the path of all the tornadoes and then we're going to check out the rest of the week in just a few minutes. Do stay with us. The special edition of Action 10 News at Noon is next. You're looking at uh, aerial view of Lenore City, a community trying to recover following a devastating tornado. Up to 20 square blocks of city property were either damaged or destroyed, and one person is confirmed dead and possibly another. Officials are asking everybody to please stay out of the area and let emergency workers do their jobs. Good afternoon, everyone. Many East Tennessee residents are trying to put their lives back together today after yesterday's severe weather. The Lenore City area was the hardest hit by the storm. Action 10's Ken Schwal is in Lenore City at this hour and joins us live with uh, via Skylink with the latest. Ken? 
Uh, good morning, Carl. The uh, hurricane touched, or the uh, tornado touched out at about 5.30 yesterday afternoon. It demolished or damaged dozens of homes and businesses in Lenore City. Uh, the damage was confined. Here we're standing uh, at the uh, business district of Lenore City, an area on Highway 11 near 321 that was very heavily damaged. And uh, there were some homes. Uh, you mentioned the injuries. There were several. We don't even have a, a count right now. One fatality has been confirmed. A woman named Barbara Hefner was killed uh, while sitting on her couch in the living room when her second story home or two story home fell uh, in on her. Uh, there is uh, word of a possible uh, nether fatality that has yet to be confirmed. It was a long night. Uh, the uh, security was uh, tight. Uh, curfew was in effect. Nobody was allowed on the streets. Uh, a minimum of looting. Uh, but then when the sun came up, that is when the uh, real work began on the morning after the night before. With me, Herb? Yes, bless your heart, you're all right. I thought about you. I was worried about you and the little girl. Right? Barbara Ryan and Eugene Bow were total strangers before last night. Then the tornado hit the laundromat where both were washing their clothes. And there's something about narrowly escaping death that brings folks together. Windows broke out and everything just started coming toward us. It had me pinned in at the dryers. I was in Korea in 1951, but it was nothing like this. This was an emotional day for the victims of the tornado as they returned to find everything they owned destroyed. Some had no insurance. But property only means so much. Lives mean much more. Norman George was in his house with his wife and two kids. And I was closing the window, and all of a sudden the whole house just collapsed. Just came down, just like a just just like a just like a ton of bricks, right on top of all of us. You know, so we're just thank God that we're alive. That's all. We should have been killed the way that place looks. Jim, do you still need us over there, or what's your location? Authorities spent the morning searching for more victims. Trained dogs helped out. <laughs> The search is on. Uh, manpower has been increased to several agencies from surrounding fire departments, uh, police. Damage assessment was next as authorities tried to figure out the dollar loss. The job was huge and slow. We do it street at a time, residents at a time, and on foot. And basically, Carl, that's the way this whole recovery is uh, going to go. It is going to be slow. It'll be a year before the North City is back uh, to normal. The only work uh, cleanup being done now is to allow access into areas and to uh, restore power. Uh, Adina Chumley is with us. She has been uh, here since uh, late yesterday and has uh, seen a lot. She's dealt with uh, a lot of people that are victims of this. What have you found? Well, I tell you, Ken, everybody's just trying to bounce back for the most part today. And really, in the light of day, finally, we're able to see just exactly what has happened in Lenore City. As Ken mentioned, one death, uh, an unconfirmed second. Uh, but really, power right now, the big story in Lenore City, it's still in very short supply. Electricity right now, uh, about 80% of the city still needs electricity and of course uh, there's no estimate on how long it's going to take uh, Lenore City Utilities to get uh, the electricity back on in this area. Now keeping people especially the older uh, people in the area warm and fed is a priority right now for volunteers. Okay. We understand we're only here to help you in case you need it. Senior residents of Spring Place are getting a helping hand from Tennessee Defense Forces. Without electricity to heat their homes, they're seeking warmth at Lenore City High School. We'll get to go home maybe if they have, now we have water, so if we had light, but we don't have any heat. Volunteers are a vital support in this relief effort. They're setting up cots and quilts and helping the Red Cross with hot meals. Anybody is welcome here, especially if they have uh, any damage to their house, they don't have heat. We have heat here, we have food, we're going to be serving hot meals. Uh, we're going to have people check in here if they have any damage to their house. We're going to try to get insurance people out here and lumber people. We're going to get them all the assistance we can. Nature's wrath destroyed Elizabeth Moat's home, but she credits a higher power with protection her life and her sons during the rampage. And we are lucky it's just, just not three miracles, but we could have been killed and, and God just took care of us. 
seems to be the feeling with a lot of people around here. Uh, but we do want to note that because of the electricity problem, we're still not sure whether or not there will be school in Lenore City or Loudoun County tomorrow. Keep your ears, uh, of course, posted to uh, television stations, radio stations, whatever, and we'll keep you updated on that. And also, I might mention the Red Cross, which has been, as you know, hard hit all over the country lately. This is just something else. Red Cross uh, could use some money uh, if you want to uh, get in touch with your local Red Cross office. That's a good idea. I'm Adina Chumley for Ken Schwal, reporting live from Lenore City. Carl? All right, Adina and Ken. And again, we might stress here that officials in the area have asked that even though the, you do have an, a desire to help out here, uh, the emergency experts have asked that you please stay away from the city. And if they need your help, of course, they will ask for it. While most of Knox County escaped with only minor damage, the Powell community is reeling today from that storm. Action 10's Patricia McGeever has been following the situation in uh, one community there and joins us live. Patty? Hi, Carl. I don't know if you can hear behind me or not, but you can hear the chainsaw. Hi, Carl. Well, Oak Ridge Police Chief Brayton says that they were very, very lucky last night. Things could have been much worse. At this point, there are no fatalities to report in the Oak Ridge area, and damage has been restricted to the Union Valley Industrial Complex just across the street from the Y-12 plant. Witnesses we spoke with this morning say the tornado tore through the Oak Ridge area about 4.45 last night. Today, Oak Ridge police say that time of day was life-saving. This is a very fortunate thing. If it's going to happen any time, uh, Sunday afternoon is probably the most unoccupied time for us in this particular industrial area. Certainly, we regret to see what happened in other residential areas because Sunday is the time when it's heavy occupancy in the residential. But uh, as far as Oak Ridge is concerned, uh, if it's going to happen, Sunday afternoon was the best time. Well, the tornado passed right by the Y-12 plant shredding trees and as you can see, snapping many uh, power lines. The real story, though, today is the business damage, which could reach into the millions. You're looking at pictures right now of an electronics company that had its entire warehouse destroyed in just a matter of seconds. Many business owners will spend most of today just trying to assess how bad the damage is. Carl? Uh, Kristen, it's our understanding that some damage was done to the uh, Y-12 nuclear weapons plant. Of course, they don't make weapons there anymore, but uh, what's the damage there? Do we know? Well, Chief Bratton told us they found out early on about five uh, last night that the plant itself avoided being hit, but there are some internal power lines that are down along the ridge. All right, Kristen, thank you. And again, uh, a P.S. to that, and that is the uh, members of the Claxton Volunteer Fire Department have asked us to uh, thank you for your help, but... Uh, they ask that you please not bring any more food or any more clothing to the volunteer fire department. That's at Claxton. When they need it, of course, they'll ask you for it. Uh, so the volunteer fire Robin Sells reporting from Teleco Plains. I do hope you'll stay with us now. Byron Weber's up with the forecast next. All right, I want to show you the tornado warnings in sequence as they started off yesterday. Now, these are warnings issued by the Weather Service and the times that they were issued. The actual tornadoes probably occurred just a few minutes before each warning. The first one in Oak Ridge occurred at uh, 4.59. The second one in Powell at uh, 5.08. The third one in Lenore City, the really bad one, at 5.16. Friendsville at 5.25. This was a severe thunderstorm warning, but we had a tornado watch in effect at the time. And we did have a uh, tornado down in Teleco Plains at 5.53. Again, these are the warnings and the times. Uh, the actual tornado just a few minutes before. This is about as good as we can do in this part of the country. And when you have a tornado watch in effect for the entire area, it can happen anytime. So you always need to uh, pay attention to the skies and listen to your radio and TV stations. Uh, he'll travel on this road. Walk. Can't believe they ain't got somebody directing around that right there. That sucker and brought it right on down, didn't it? Right here's where them teenagers went off the other day. Yeah. The yeah, tree right there. On top. Well, what a mess it got through here. Yeah, this is something we haven't seen. 
Yeah, this is something new. See, right back in there. See, this is what all I was seeing over here, Sherry. Right up there's Cricket's house. These houses down here. down through here at the time.
They've not got this section out. their bird. Look how it just pushed those houses against those other ones down there, so just pushed them up against each other. Imagine being those houses. Gary had a turtle over there and the turtle was found froze this morning. Oh, man. And it's alive. They said it, it that uh, well they said that uh, on the radio last night that somebody come out carrying three rabbits. They were dirty and mangled and everything. They said they was alive. Said they had no idea who they belonged to, but they found them. You know, that's that's real strange. Yeah. One side's fine, the other side's gone.
that right up there. And I would have had a heart attack. My heart attack was coming after I What? My heart attack was coming after I seen it. Do it. I'm standing right here in the middle of the deadly hit of the tornado. There you can see the school. It wasn't really untouched. You come down here and I think right there, right over there or right here one is where that first lady died. They're talking like there might be another one dead. But as you see, the, the tornado went back through there. See all the broken limbs and stuff down the gully? And it went, it skipped all the way across back through there. Okay, standing right here in this direction, the tornado would have decided to go right there. It would have hit us. Would have hit my mobile home park. But this is the devastation. used to be 601 A Street. Yeah, you see, you take 
works. Move the camera over just a little bit that way. See the shopping center right over there? That's the direction I live in from here. There's a trailer Susie said y'all used to live in. It did have an awning across the top of it. Oh, Sherry caught the rabbit. Sherry caught the rabbit. Yay! There's another dog in there. They said there's more animals. There's Jason's grandma's. And this is their backyard. Come on. Oh, you scared him. Don't move, Sherry. Cocker. Sherry, why don't you move back out of the way? They're afraid. Temperamental. Yeah. And scared. Don't get bent by it. That's all you do. Now to get the other one out. I don't believe he likes it. Yeah, just. Sean. Sean. Underneath you. Underneath you. Yeah, lay it up there, lay it up there. She'll jump up there. I don't think so. <laughs> Houses aren't very good. Well, she's nervous, you can tell. <laughs> she don't know about it. Just lay it there and leave it sitting there. Maybe he'll... No, see, it went back up under there. Let them come on out. Yeah. Well, then you come down here. And There's no way. See if you can pick her up. There you go. Yeah. There you go.
rescue attempt. Yeah, I get the rabbit and Sean gets the dogs. <laughs> I say, yay! Oh, is this one in Animals and stuff to fire the That's the way that guy talked. Well, all of them that was behind the laundromat made it. Yeah. They all got scared the hell out of them and everything. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah. Well, they got away. Yeah. They got it opened up. Looks like. Yeah, town's open now. Yeah. Well, I think the whole thing opened up. Nothing up here got damaged at all. I used it on the dog, you never use it on Jesse. Where's the yeah. pecs on brush? Uh, you got me. I haven't seen it. It's red lights out, isn't it? Where is it? Red light that was right here. Yeah, he's gone. Oh, that he's, he's back there too. We left him. We left him at home. Yep, that's where I thought that trailer was. No, here they are. I got them. <laughs> oh, man, don't be doing that to me. Well, let's pull up in here and we'll give them to him. Cause he's still up here. It looks like. It's Ray Strader. Let me, uh... I got around that on, on this trailer. Is he around anywhere? It's over there in the car? Okay, because I, I was down here this morning took some pictures of the place and I thought I'd bring him back down here too. That, yeah, that's in front of the station. No, that's right here in front. Yeah, I lived back here behind Third National Bank, and uh, we was keeping an eye out the windows and stuff because they was calling for tornado warnings and stuff. Well, you know, we didn't see that. Now, if we had, we'd, of course, we could well, have it, did, it, it anyway. It didn't take five minutes. After after they came on and uh, on the weather and said that there was real bad weather in the area, I mean, it's five minutes a tornado hit. It's five but, minutes. Uh, 
Brad took his shirt off. He says, I believe I'll go in the bathroom and shave. And I said, Mom, I'll fix us something to eat while you're in there. It was about five o'clock. And uh, so he didn't even have a chance to laugh his face. The oh, it's about time. The wind out of the bathroom, yeah. throw guys there. Sorry. And then he it started. He didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. Turn over. Oh, yeah, if you want to, go ahead and pull those out and take a look at them. And, uh, oh, these are, these yeah. are good. What are they? There's some pictures uh, he's made. Trailer. Oh, this is a student. Yeah, yeah, it was, morning, yeah, that was uh, right at about 15 to 7, I guess. You see where it moved it off right here? Oh, yeah. And it twirled it around and moved it up. And it was tied down, too, wasn't it? Oh, it was tied down. Well, I'm trying to find a, a place here. I can get back in right here. Where? I, okay, I see it. As long as I get out like this, I can get out. See, there's the laundry. You're not going to turn right here, Jeff. They got blocked up. You're going to have to get well, over. Well, yeah, I'll have to get over. Well, that's all that's left of Pride right there. That's the first time I've seen Pride, actually. See a little bit right there. Sun. Yeah, right. I'm telling you, you salvaged much of it. Yeah. I was thinking I was smelling it earlier. I think it's people's exhaust. Yellow's coming up next on Action 10 News. The worst storm in almost 20 years rips a path of destruction through East Tennessee. Residents sift through the rubble of their homes trying to salvage what's left in the wake of the tornado. And emergency crews work to remove dangerous barricades and to restore power to thousands of storm victims. We'll go live to the hardest hit areas and we'll survey the damage live from the sky. A special one-hour edition of Action 10 News after the storm next. Quality products. 
You are watching East Tennessee's 24-hour news channel, WBIR-TV Channel 10. This is a special hour-long edition of Action 10 News, After the Storm. The worst storm in almost two decades carves a path of destruction through East Tennessee. Emergency crews worked around the clock, clearing debris and searching for victims. But not until daylight dawned did the magnitude of the storm really hit home. Good evening. Due to the devastating impact of last night's storm, we are presenting a special hour-long edition of Action 10 News. NBC Nightly News will be seen at 7 o'clock. Tonight, we'll take you live to the hardest-hit areas and up in a helicopter for a view of the damage. And first, hundreds of rescue workers and volunteers are helping the victims of the storm put their lives back together. Action 10's Ken Schwal has been in the North City throughout the night. Joins us now live via Skyline. Ken? Bill and Edie, this was uh, indeed the uh, hardest hit area here in East Tennessee, a section we're downtown in the business section. Several businesses destroyed, a couple of gas stations uh, in a residential area just up the hill was destroyed. Uh, one fatality that we know of, a woman named Martha Hefner, who lived on A Street. Her two-story building collapsed. She was uh, in the living room at the time. Her daughter was uh, injured. There were many, many injuries. The town is uh, basically in chaos. The schools have been closed. Uh, the whole town, in effect, has been closed. Uh, the only traffic has uh, been uh, people trying to get back into their homes to uh, find out what they look like. A little bit of sightseers, they're trying to keep that to a minimum. Uh, cleanup has been the order of the day. You see strange uh, things. A woman came by here uh, and picked up a little pillow from a, a sofa that she had lost. She lives two blocks up the street. The, the uh, pillow ended up here. There was a pickup truck ended in somebody's on somebody's house it had come across the whole the street and landed there you see some strange things in the whole incident the whole ordeal has given a lot of people here in lenore city uh kind of a new outlook on life you're with me her yes bless your heart you're all right I th it is the the beginning of a very slow uh process here in lenore city uh, a lot of things need doing uh part of the town still doesn't have electricity uh, traffic lights at the corner of uh, 11 and uh, 321, a major, major intersection, have been, they're gone. We, uh, they, uh, they're, they're blown far away. Uh, they uh, have yet to find uh, one of them. And uh, they're just uh, things like insurance claims. Uh, a hard thing under best of circumstances, but one of the big insurance companies is about 20 feet away. It is demolished. The record, some of them are destroyed. Uh, so it is going to be a long a road back, no quick fix here. Federal funding, as Senator Sasser talked about, is very important to many of these people. But uh, a lot of hard work is probably what's going to get them through it. And certainly any, it'll be a long time before things will go back to normal, if ever, in Lenore City. And I know that our viewers are, are asking, and I know authorities are asking people to stay out of the area unless they absolutely have to be there. But I know our viewers want to know, what can people do to help? Do you, what's your read on that? Do you have some perspective? One thing that we have been told, they've been getting help from all over. Knoxville Police, Knoxville Fire Department, other towns have been coming in. Uh, Red Cross Salvation Army, uh, those groups, those uh, Red Cross Salvation Army, which you'll probably hear more about, uh, mm -hmm. could use money. That is probably okay. the biggest thing they can do. All right. Thank you very, very much, Ken. Appreciate it. Well, Kristen Hoke now is live in the Chopper 10 helicopter, and let's go to her. Kristen? Bill and Edie, as Ken mentioned, you can't exactly put this kind of loss into words. That's why we're up in the air to give you a perspective on the type of devastation we're talking about. This entire community, uh, just the northeast end of town of Lenore City, near Highway 321, has been badly devastated. Homes crushed. We've seen actual trailers turned on end. We've seen barns crushed to the ground like a stack of playing cards. We've seen cars bent around telephone poles. The sheer force of nature. You're looking right now at what 200 plus miles per hour can do to anything man-made. Now, we also spent a great deal this morning in the Oak Ridge area, which was devastated. The tornado swept across Pine Ridge right next to the Y-12 plant, just missing a residential area and the plant itself. Primarily, the damage was in the business community right across the street from the Y-12 plant. About 5.30 last night, Rick Lars had to outrun a tornado. Scared. <laughs> totally scared. Lars was one of very few at work when the tornado came through this Oak Ridge industrial complex. He was about to leave Dixie Resource Electronics when he saw the tornado coming, grabbed his son, and ran for cover. 
And I looked up and happened to look up, and then on the hillside over here, I saw the tornado coming down off the hill. And when I grabbed him at the couch, and it was probably about 30 feet, grabbed him from the couch and ran to the bathroom, the women's bathroom. And uh, we dove in the bathroom, and I laid on top of him about that time the tornado hit and leveled the back of the building, and you can see the damage. As uh, mentioned in the report, you can tell that the Oak Ridge area did have less damage in terms of residential. As we look down on Lenore City, we can really tell how much damage was suffered here. We have been uh, confirmed uh, that the damage out in Oak Ridge did not affect the Y-12 plant. There was never any hazardous material risk out there because it did only graze some of the power lines just to the side of the plant and tear up some of the sheds and other things like that. And reporting live from the air, Kristen Hoke, Action 10 News. See there? <laughs> That's what I was afraid of. Kristen, you've been in both places. You've been on the ground and in the air. From which vantage point can you really realize the immensity of, of all the damage? Well, Bill, I tell you, I've been covering tornadoes for quite some time, being from Michigan originally, and this is just shocking to me. When we were in the Oak Ridge area, you could see the actual track across the ridges as it headed towards Claxton, and the sheer force of this type of storm was phenomenal either from the ground or in the air. I tell you, looking down on these homes where you can actually see the floor plans, there's no roof. These people are lucky to have walls. They're just trying to put the pieces back together again, and it's devastating from all angles. Indeed, and as many people have said, they're lucky today to be alive as well. Thank you very much, Kristen. Good job. Caught some pictures, some still pictures, of these photo clouds as they pass through the Lenore City area. He took these, his name is Len Millslap, from Loudoun County, off his deck. That's the funnel cloud that raced through and caused so much destruction through the city of Lenore City. Now, the winds were packing 250 miles an hour in that particular storm. Very devastating. Well, the storms came from the west. They first started out on the came at 459. A short while afterwards in Powell, about nine minutes later. The one in Powell caused some devastation. Shortly after that, there was one in Lenore City. That warning came at 516. It went from Lenore City, another isolated cell, to the Friendsville area. And a short while later, close to 30 minutes later, down in Monroe County, to the folks down in Teleco Plains, that area saw at least two funnel clouds. And so at this point, we know of at least six here in the valley. There were six up on the plateau and three down at one time in the city of Cookville. So certainly a devastating area. We have the time lapse for you yesterday to show these cells coming up. The heights on the clouds on these, you see the intensity of these cells as they came across, the levels 4 and 5 as it comes into the Oak Ridge area. And then it dies out as it moves across. The ones that came out of Cookville coming across, you see them right there across Oak Ridge and into Lenore City. Tops are 45,000 feet, certainly devastating. We have right now for you the show you exactly what thunder. First of all, had some warm air that came into the area. The warm air and the cold air with the cold front about 4 o'clock yesterday started to clash. There was enough energy as it came off the plateau and into the valley that the tops on those clouds had enough energy and were as volatile enough to produce those various thunderstorm and funnel cloud cells. So when we... This tornado can be assured they'll be touched by human kindness. Cassandra McGee joins us now live from the North City. Cassandra? Well, Bill and Edie, today residents of Lenore City and the Powell community are indeed feeling the helping hands of volunteers. For many, that made that help made the storm damage seem just a little less painful. With the sunshine today came some rays of hope for storm victims in the Northbrook subdivision of Powell, where several homes were hit hard by the storm. Help came quickly in the form of neighbors, churches, and the Domino's Pizza Man. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Domino delivers. All right. Thank you. Dig in. Dig in. Well, these folks are in our delivery area, and we figured that you guys have been out here all night, and this is pretty devastating. The Red Cross workers continue their rounds picking up victims. Oh, 
<laughs> Food, clothing, and shelter are the basic needs for these victims now, and the Red Cross is expecting more people. The Knox County American Red Cross says besides the basics, rental property is needed to help families. There's a lot of people who are in homes that have been uh, damaged too, too much for them to stay in. We're going to need places where we can rent them places to stay until their properties are repaired. So if anyone out there has rental properties available, they might want to call us and let us know about that as well. Tonight, volunteers are trying to make everyone comfortable in spite of the tragedy they've been through. Red Cross will be setting up two additional service centers, one in its main headquarters on Middlebrook Pike and one here at the Lenore City Hall here in Lenore City, and those will be uh, additional centers to help folks who need it. Another help agency that is on the scene here in Lenore City is the Salvation Army, and with me is Mrs. Captain Ruthanna Vinson, as she's known with the Salvation Army. Uh, tell us what services you're offering here to people. Well, immediately we're uh, pinpointing the service volunteers themselves. We're providing coffee, hot cider, soup, hot dogs, that sort of thing. For anyone who's coming to help work the site and for our uh, public service people who are here working. Uh, we will later on be accepting uh, donations of food and clothing to help uh, reestablish some of the, uh, the material things that these people will need. So at this point, are you in need of more volunteers? Well, we are beginning a service unit here in the Lenore City area. Our manpower right now is uh, okay. We have pulled from uh, some volunteers from Bristol and Johnson City that will be joining us in Oak Ridge. Uh, but uh, the, the gifts in kind are always welcome. Uh, the post office box here in Lenore City is post office box 989. And like I say, the material things we'll be happy to take on site here at uh, the service center. That's right. As you can see, that service center is behind us. Do you plan to uh, stay on the scene pretty much all night? Yes. We have told them that we will be here as long as there is a need for us. And right now they're looking at least through Wednesday. And we will be manning it 24 hours. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Vincent. Uh, as you heard, there are several help agencies here on the scene. And later in this newscast, uh, you might want to get out your pencil and paper because we'll be telling you about many more. Bill and Edie? And certainly, Cassandra, for people who have lost everything, those helping hands are going to be needed for a long time. Yeah, they are crucial, and uh, they are in need of uh, cash, donations, food, clothing. And again, we'll tell you more later. Okay, thank you very much, Cassandra. As Cassandra said uh, later in the newscast, we'll tell you what you can do to help with the relief effort. But first, Bob Kessling is up next with sports. That's the storm. I said, no, honey, that ain't wind. That's the tornado coming. There are hundreds of volunteers are helping the cleanup and recovery operations in the areas hit by the tornadoes. Perhaps many more of you would like to help in some way. Cassandra is standing by live again from Lenore City to tell us uh, how we can help. Cassandra? Well, Bill and Edie, there are helps. Possible by your local. In the quiet after the storm, residents began digging out and cleaning up from the tornadoes that cut a path of destruction across East Tennessee yesterday. Good evening. We have a special edition of the Night Beat. Tonight we'll survey tornado damage from across the area and find out how residents are trying to salvage what's left of their homes. Officials say no less than six tornadoes touched down in East Tennessee yesterday, and despite the destruction, only one person was killed. The body of Martha Hefner was pulled out of her Lenore City home late last night. At dawn today, authorities continued their search for more victims. Specially trained dogs combed through destroyed buildings and wreckage. Meanwhile, people returned to their homes to try and salvage whatever they could. The scope of the damage in Lenore City is awesome. Homes and businesses destroyed, neighborhoods littered with debris. The storm has left hundreds of people in Lenore City homeless tonight. Action 10's Kim Stevens joins us now live from Lenore City High School, which has been turned into an emergency shelter. Uh, Kim, what's the latest from there tonight? Well, the latest is thankfully there are very few people needing this shelter. Many have found refuge and help in other areas, but this is the second night of curfew in Lenore City. And outside, outside the doors here at Lenore City High School, the streets are eerie and lonely. Inside, people seek refuge, help, food, and warmth. Here are their stories tonight. And the, the house raised up off of the pillars, off of the foundation, and just shook, just, just like it was just a quivering and a quaking. 
and then it just went back down. Had demolished it. Had tore our house up. Worst any house in Little City. Reality has set in. 30 hours after the tornado, Lenore City neighborhoods sit quiet in the darkness. A different sort of cemetery created by the omnipotence of nature. Contrary to early Monday, the streets are now quiet, except for the police enforcing the curfew. Most everyone has found refuge in warm homes as the power has been restored. That's why these folks from Spring Place Senior Housing are now leaving the shelter at Lenore City High School and going home. How, how was it spending the day here then? <laughs> Only it wasn't bad. I've been in worse places. I'm tickled to death to be going home. But these people have been real nice to me, and I appreciate it very much. Now only a few beds are being used when over 100 were occupied Sunday night. The good thing that's happened is, is uh, Lenore City Power Company's got our power and our heat back on, and, and the people who didn't have any damage to their houses or had uh, friends and family who didn't have any damage now have heat and power, so now we're releasing them to go ahead and, and go back to their homes that have heat and power and, and food. So we're getting people out of here as fast as we can and get them into a nice, comfortable environment obviously happening very well this evening. Now we are in the gym at Lenore City High School. Of course this will be open as uh, as need continues. So yes it will be open tomorrow. Will school happen tomorrow? Yes it will. We're told that uh, the PE classes will be brought to different areas so that people can still come to the gym at Lenore City High School to get some food, warmth, companionship and help. Dave Stewart from the East Tennessee Disaster Relief Agency joins us now to let us know what is going to happen. How long do you know of this relief uh, effort continuing here or is it going to be going throughout the area? Uh, I don't know when they will shut the effort down here in the gymnasium but uh, commencing tomorrow morning at 930 until dark and uh, daily then until uh, until and as long as the need is there uh, the people in need of foodstuffs clothing bedding uh, items for their babies any type of help can uh, come to the Seventh-day Adventist Church at 2nd and B Street in downtown Lenore City and there will be a staff there to help them and give them uh, support in any, in any manner that they might request or have need of. You were telling me there were things that people are recommended to not bring. Uh, the, the people who've not gone through these things, uh, the first thing you think is they'll need clothes. Please all that we're doing with clothes is taking them and warehousing them to get them out of our way. Every time a disaster hits, people bring us clothes and they backlog and get in the way. Blankets, yes. Bedding, yes. Uh, clothing for infants, yes. But no other type clothing. Please, you, you will do us a disservice by bringing those clothes. Now, aside from Lenore City, give me a brief overview of other areas that uh, people can go help. Uh, they could help uh, at at the uh, churches in the Knoxville area. If they want to give donated items or funds, it can be given to Rural Metro, and we'll be online in the next day or so telling you of various churches that will be accepting donations and funds. Okay. And they can call our agency in Knoxville at 524-5002, and we will be coordinating volunteer efforts through that agency. Thanks a lot, Dave. Thank you. Back to you, Bill and Edie. Thank you very much, Kim. It's quiet tonight in the Northbrook subdivision. Ted Hall reports on some good neighbors in Lenore City during the height of yesterday's storm. We're with some of the lucky ones, just one or two houses down from Jason and Beverly Rice. Pure demolition, but what did you guys he see and what did you hear and that sort of thing as it started? I just came out the door right there and I, it sounded like a big jet train, something taking off. And it's just big old black cloud and everything was going straight up in the air. It's sucking everything up. Me and my family ran to our basement time we got down there really it was over behind us and then when I came back out I found this lady as soon as I came out the door the lady down the road come running to me screaming begging for help her son was trapped her husband was trapped two more ladies in another house down here were trapped I was the only one out here trying to help do what I could let's go ahead and go down to these houses Beverly. just from everywhere around they people were screaming just, all yeah, over the place just, and you didn't know which way to go and it was raining so hard you couldn't see it was you know it was just a mess. This is the area that was the hardest hit. This is up here on 5th and A Street. Of course, you've been hearing all about that. This is the hardest area hit. How many houses do you suppose have been ripped up up here? There were three houses right here. This lady was in her house. She came out after it was over. It by shifted all that way right there. It shifted 20 right. feet. It started right here and went back there. There were two ladies in this house. 
The one was deceased inside. We got the other one out safely. She's in the hospital from here. And then the last house here is where the two men were trapped. So what'd you do? You found a man under here. He was underneath bricks was and under underneath a, truck. a car. Right. Truck. He was under a truck and had chimney blocks piled on top of him. And he was begging me to please get him out. What'd you do? I tried to get him out and he started screaming. He was hurt real bad in his back. So I just told him I, I could and I was afraid I'd paralyze him. Did you see the tornado watch signs on TV yes, and everything and you didn't believe them? Yeah, well, I, I kind of got tired of seeing them going across the screen. But at the last second before, when I come back through the living room from the kitchen, the TV said tornado warning. And that's when I looked out the door and I saw it right there. It was here. Uh, you too can help the victims of this uh, weekend's storms. Many relief agencies are taking... Plus, she has a much calmer forecast next. Built to win. Almost everything in its path and left parts of downtown Lenore City looking like a war zone. These pictures were taken by Len Millsaps, who lives in Loudoun County, just across the river from Lenore City. He captured on film what many residents of Lenore City will remember as their worst nightmare. Well, certainly for those of us who didn't think tornadoes would happen in East Tennessee, we got fooled badly. Well, we certainly can get them. We had some back in 1974, and in fact, there were some folks down at Teleco Plains that got these that remembered those in 74. Well, we had several move through the area yesterday in a very violent storm. We have some pictures for you that were taken from the air today. You can see in some areas the counterclockwise motion that these actual tornadoes came in. It's almost like a loop effect as you see the path that it took as it moved through the Lenore City area. These are shots from Lenore City. Many other areas were hard hit. Mother Nature sure showed her wrath yesterday afternoon. And we also have the time lapse for you from yesterday afternoon that shows you exactly where that storm system came from. Started out near Cookville, went across the plateau, went all the way through. You see those yellow spots come up. Those are the isolated tornado cells. Here it comes again, goes through Cookville. There were as many six funnel clouds in Cookville. The line continued to gain strength as it came off the plateau. Something unusual. It's normally when storms come off the plateau. Oh. We close tonight with some scenes from that extraordinary 30 hours. Thank you for watching. left by a weekend tornado. Ken Schwab will have a live report on the cleanup efforts. And out one final party next on Action 10 News at noon. From East Tennessee's 24-hour news channel, WBIR-TV Channel 10, this is Action 10 News. Good afternoon. Bulldozers on backhoes are working to wipe away the scars left by Sunday's unseasonable storm. Residents all across East Tennessee are still cleaning up the mess and trying to get back to normal. Mm -hmm. As we know, Lenore City was hit hard by the tornado. Action 10's Ken Schwal has been covering the rescue efforts and storm damage since Sunday. He joins us live from the scene with an update on the cleanup efforts. Ken? Well, Carl, you called it right. Uh, bulldozers, backhoes, a lot of uh, heavy equipment moving in. Cleaning up is the top priority here on this uh, second day after the uh, tornado touched down. Uh, crowd control is, is another problem with all this heavy equipment in. They're trying to keep out as much uh, outside traffic as they can. And uh, the insurance people are waiting in the wings, ready to come in and make their... Uh, uh, assessments of the damage. Uh, insurance claims are being filed at many offices around here and in Knoxville. That is a problem in some instances as the one insurance company had its roof blown off and is working under tough situations. But uh, power is uh, being returned slowly but surely throughout the town. That is another 
a big priority. Uh, the uh, school is back in session. The uh, disaster uh, relief center that was set up at the high school has been moved out. Everybody ha now has a place to stay, mostly with families. And uh, things are returning somewhat to, uh, to normal. Outside contractors are beginning to come in, and uh, the police and uh, sheriff's office asked us to remind uh, residents that some of those may be a little on the unscrupulous side. So uh, check their credentials well if they come to uh, clean up and uh, help put things back together. But uh, all in all, tough situation. Cleanup has begun. It's uh, many parts of the town are returned to normal. But uh, for those uh, like here in the 5th and A Street area, uh, it'll, it'll be a year before things are really back to normal. Okay, Ken. Thanks a lot. We appreciate it. Thank we'll you, Ken. We'll see hear from you later on today. Two private researchers say that they have discovered the ancestral... One of the pictures that uh, we're talking about, this was shot by uh, Mr. Lynn Millsap in Lenore City. Now, I come from Texas, from the plains, and we see a lot of tornadoes out there, and this is basically a, a textbook example of what to look for. When you have a line of severe thunderstorms coming in, of course, the clouds get dark. Well, when we have a tornado watch, this is what you need to look for. Right here is what we call a wall cloud, which is an extension of the base of the cloud, a lowering of the base. Now, you can see the base right there, right here, that is the... the the base of the thunderstorm, this part is called the wall cloud. Nine times out of ten, tornadoes come out of the wall cloud, a very defined wall cloud. You can see the funnel right there, and when the funnel reaches the ground, it's called a tornado. Usually, the wall cloud occurs along the southwestern quadrant of the thunderstorm, the back edge of the thunderstorm. And sometimes, you can actually see sunshine through, through the thunderstorm in the rear part of the uh, line that is moving through. So again, always look towards the southwestern quadrant of the thunderstorm, generally the back of the thunderstorm, and you probably will see some sunshine uh, somewhere. And the lowered part of the base is called the wall cloud, and extending from that will be the tornado. And nine times out of 10, this is what is going to happen. So next time you see a line of heavy thunderstorms, this is what you look for if we have a tornado watch in the area. All right, now let's have a look. Go check this out. This is just four days after the tornado uh, hit Lenore City, and it's snowing, man. There's snow on the ground. It's right now about 20 after 8 in the morning. It's been snowing since uh, Sherry left. It's 6 o'clock, and it's already piling up pretty good, as you can see. top of their roof at. Now about, <clears throat> about 10 minutes later, it's really starting to come down now.
Here we are at 9 o'clock now. The temperature's coming up to 30 degrees, but it's starting to really start snowing now. You can see it collecting on the side of the roads. Be back in 15 minutes. Well, here we are, 10 after 9 right now. And we got about about an inch piling up right now on top of the like the cars and some places in the road. Be back about it's about twenty till ten. And it's still coming down but it seems like it's slacking up just a little bit. But temperature dropped back down to twenty eight. So be back in a few minutes. Well here it is, ten till ten. It's starting to slack off some. But it's still piling up on the roads pretty pretty good. Yeah, you can see how much is on the car. And the temperature is back up to 31. Just bouncing up and down. See you in a few. Well. About 17 minutes after 10 right now. Eh, it's kind of slacked out, but it's still piling up a little bit. The roads are not as bad as the way they are talking on TV. Not around here anyway. Be back in a little bit. Well, it's 10 till 11 now. Seems like it's trying to melt off the roads. Or is somebody up playing in it? But, uh, still coming down. We got like two inches on top of the cars. And temperature's right at 33 degrees right now. Okay, 20 after 11 now. And it's still coming down. It's not gave it a break. Since this morning, 6 o'clock. Temperature. Across the street at the bank, as you can see, it is 31 degrees. And it's piled up pretty good there on the car. Let's see, I've got to go get Josh here in a few minutes. Go let him stay a half a day at school and let him come home for you and some of this. Be back here in just a little bit. There was an ad in last night's paper where somebody got some rabbit from A Street. Oh, really? Yeah. I tried to call it somebody. Getting slushy.
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure I did it. There's Susie's first step. And it's packed. Watch out, honey. There's a grill, and check out that chair right there. It's got it almost covering the table. Look at Captain over here. I think I hear somebody with snowmobiles. Comes that wind back again. Yeah, Do what? Really? I was going to say there ain't really no sense in doing that. Oh, uh, he ain't going to church in the morning. <laughs> he ain't going to church in the morning. I don't think so. You wouldn't convince a preacher of that, though. Man, look on Denver's truck over there. I know what Well, look at John there. <laughs> His was almost like that whenever I came in this morning. Was it now? I came in at 5 o'clock. I drove by the way from Knoxville. It wasn't really so bad in that tempo. That tempo did a really good job. I tell you what, I've got snow this deep in the back of my yard. Come over here. Let's go over here and look. Oh yeah. Man, look out where, where it's been whipping around this trailer. And it's like what three inches deep. Look here, this is solid, ice. solid yeah. ice right here. Man, I tell you what, I ain't seen nothing like this around here in my life. I ain't neither. I Man, look at that, look at that barrel. That barrel's waist high right there. Yeah. That's waist high to me. <laughs> sure, you can try to go around there and stand other, around the other side of it. Or get right in the middle of it. Stand right in the middle of it. <laughs> well, they're still not touching the ground, I'd say. Man, look at that. That's waist deep Sherry. And she really, she's probably about five inches from the ground right there. There's a good spot. Somebody's got snowmobiles over there. I want to know what that was. I bet you anything. I'd love to do that. Yeah. Boy, oh, a good head heel to slide down. I was thinking over there at that church. You coming ready? down that driveway. That, oh. that would probably be a good place to do it. It seems like there was. Man, this is deep, man. This is deep. That's neat high to me. You live just down the bridge, Dad. We make good snow in. Oh, yeah. It's not, it's not even packed right now. You can take it out of my back door. Dang. Well, mine looks like. My air conditioner's frozen. Is it? Well, uh, who needs it? <laughs> well, it's not your heat unit, though? No. That's halfway up, right there. That's halfway up my panels. Look here in my backyard, man. Looky here, Jesus Christ. Yeah, this first time I've been back here. Dang. Well, she's still not on the ground. Oh, no.